Hello, everybody, and welcome to ECMAP. Today, we're going to talk about section P.1, number sets. This will be followed by two other videos in section P.1. I would also like to add that I think it'd be really good for you to read section P.1. There is a lot of stuff covered in there that I'm not going to cover in these videos, like orders of operations, expressions, some stuff that you should know. So these videos are going to focus on the things that are in P1 that you may not have seen before. All right, well, let's get into it. So what we're looking at right here is a diagram of the real numbers. Real numbers are numbers that basically all kinds of numbers that you've seen before. Uh, so pretty much any number you can think of except I, for example, is an example of a real number. It's the main number set we work with. Uh, the best way to think about the real numbers is it's any number that lives on the number line. So if you have the number lines with zero in the middle, uh, you know, one, two, three, four. But the real numbers are not just the one, two, three, four. It's everything in between. Everything in between are the real numbers, including things like pi over here near three, um, including things like one million over here, or however many zeros that is. There's a million uh, over there. Everything there is a real number. We have a uh, fancy symbol for all of these sets of numbers. And fancy symbol for the real numbers is what I call a double stroke R. So it's like a big capital R with two vertical strokes. This is the universal symbol for real numbers. If you walk into any university math department, you look up any math on the internet, and you say you use that symbol, people will know what you're talking about. So it's a good thing to kind of get used to in practice. Now, if the real numbers are everything, uh, it makes sense to look at what are some of the subsets or the little pieces of this everything that, that we might be concerned with. And we're going to jump from the big outside box to working with the smallest box inside here. Uh, the smallest box has the symbol double stroke n. I've also seen it written like this, where the double stroke is on the middle bit. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me. And this is short for the natural numbers. What is a natural number? Well, they are the numbers that you might find out in the world. If you're walking around and you're counting apples, uh, you might have one apple, two apples, three apples, four apples, etc. So there's a sense that natural numbers are positive uh, counting numbers. And I think counting numbers is another name for the natural numbers. Um, one little step outside of the natural numbers are what we call the whole numbers. Whole numbers have a fancy W. Very rare that you actually use the fancy W symbol. I don't actually know how to draw the fancy W symbol. That's the one that like is really not very used. The whole numbers are the natural numbers. with zero added. So uh, it's just, it's kind of like, think about the development of the number systems. You know, we, we started knowing about numbers by counting things. And eventually we said, hey, numbers are good for doing arithmetic too. And then uh, some really great people in, I think India first discovered uh, or figured out that if you make a symbol for the idea of nothing, then you can do a lot more interesting mathematics. And uh, so they added that to the number system and created this new number set called the whole numbers. Um, I'll address right now, you know, if you look at this diagram, it's drawn this way for a reason. The natural numbers are a subset of the whole numbers. That is, the whole numbers contain all the natural numbers. Okay, so if you kind of think about maybe the development of, of mathematics and arithmetic, uh, you don't have to know any history, of course, uh, but you might say, hey, well, the next thing that I learned about in school after zero was negative. Well, maybe you learned about fractions first, I don't know. The next thing that we're going to imagine you learned about was negative numbers. So those numbers are part of a set called the integers. And the integers uh, have, for some reason, fancy z, which I always try to draw with like a double stroke in the middle of the z. Uh, it's fancy z. I believe it's because the German word for number starts with z. That's, that's the story that I've heard about these. Um, and what are the integers? Well, the integers are the whole numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., and all the negative whole numbers. And this is kind of uh, an abusive notation, but saying that the pattern continues 
forwards and backwards in each direction. So the integers are positive and negative whole numbers. All right. Uh, so what you'll notice as we're moving up this list is we're using the smaller set and then adding it or changing it to make a larger set. So we're building, building, building. And we're going to do that one more time right now to create a number set called the rational numbers. The rational numbers are ratios. And they have the symbol fancy Q. Like, again, it's not really important how you draw the fancy Q. Um, if you look in your book, you can see the official way for the fancy Q, um, which stands for, by the way, quotient. So the word ratio and quotient refers to fractions. So a rational number is any number of the form P over Q. Ooh, how do you draw Q? There we go. Where, where P and Q are integers. So uh, my example of rational numbers, it's not as easy to put them in a list, but I'll, I'll list a couple. Um, 2 over 1 is a, a rational number, even though that reduces to 2. Uh, you know, you can still consider it a rational number because it's a ratio of 2, uh, two and 1 are integers. Negative 1 third, 4 sevenths, uh, 81 71st negative. Those are all examples of rational numbers. Um, but what is interesting about the rational numbers is that all of these, and you know anything of this rational form, uh, is can be expressed as a terminating or repeating decimal. So 6.332, that's a rational number because you could imagine that there's some fraction that created 6.332. Um, also 7.98 repeating. There is some fraction that creates 7.98 repeating. Um, if you've never seen this trick, it's 7 and 98 99ths uh, is how you get that repeating decimal. So you can always take the, the repeating bit and put it over 99 to kind of make it work out. Um, so any terminating or repeating decimal creates a rational number. Um, and we're almost built up to this set of real numbers, but there are numbers and that are not rational, but are real. And these numbers are called the irrational numbers. Uh, now, all the other number sets were built outwards based on other ones. The irrational numbers are over on the side in a different color because they're, they're not the same. They're different. They're not based on something that, that came before. They're really uh, saying, hey, these are not rational. So irrational numbers uh, cannot be written as P over Q's. It's impossible. And the famous irrational numbers are uh, things like pi, uh, square root of 2, e, and then composites of this, like square root of 2 plus 5 is also irrational. Uh, negative e is also irrational. Um, and honestly, uh, most numbers are irrational. We'll talk about that a little bit later in a second. But uh, most numbers are irrational. There's also not a fancy uh, little symbol for the irrational numbers. Um, sometimes I use the symbol real numbers minus Q, the rational numbers, to say, hey, all real numbers that are not rational are irrational. That might be your only symbol for irrational. Usually we just write the word irrational. Um, you know, there's famous stories about irrational numbers. One is that uh, in ancient Greece, people were, were working about numbers, thinking about number systems, and someone proved that the square root of two was irrational, and this was heresy. It was literally against the what they thought to be the laws of God and nature. And uh, so the person that proved this fact, and, you know, he had a very clever proof about a square, I think. Uh, the person that proved this fact was thrown into the ocean, uh, never to be seen again. So math can be very serious, especially when you're dealing with irrational numbers. Uh, but all of these number sets together come together and create 
the real numbers. Um, and so if a number is a natural number, you know, like let's think about seven. If a number is a, is a natural number, it is also a whole number. It is also an integer. It is also a rational number. And it is also a real number. The only thing that's different is maybe an irrational number. So if you think about this, this, these sets, don't just think about them as a list. Think about them as a nested diagram where everything in the smaller set is in the larger sets. Uh, now here's a fun infinity fact for you. This diagram is wrong, uh, just a little bit. Maybe I should say uh, not to scale. Uh, really, the diagram should be drawn like this uh, because it is true that the rational numbers and all the subsets are what we call countably infinite. That is, they have the same... Uh, psi, they're all infinite, to be clear. Right? It's, there's, no, uh, there's no finite amount of any of these. Um, but every number set in the green box has actually the same size as the amount of uh, natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That means you could put them in a list or you could count them. So you could think about countably infinite as listably infinite. Uh, but it turns out that the irrational numbers are what we call uncountably infinite. That is, there's more numbers than it's possible to put into an organized list. Um, and there's, there's infinitely more than even the set of rationals. So when you draw the number line and you say, aha, you know, here's the number line, which includes all the real numbers. Uh, first, you might put the ticks for all the naturals and then the integers. But even if you fill in with the fractions, right? Here's all red, of, let's say, is my fractions. Even if you fill in with all the fractions, there's still infinitely many more between all those fractions irrationals. Just chilling out in there, uh, kind of completing the number line to, to make it be totally full. So that's a fun infinity fact for you. Irrationals are an uncountably infinite set, while the other ones uh, are countably infinite. And because, I guess technically then, the real number is Outside of that, real numbers are also uncountably infinite. That's a uh, very cool proof uh, that you will probably see if you follow your math career uh, further on. All right, so let's finish this video by just doing a little bit of an exercise. Um, it's important to use, to, to know the number systems. We don't really do problems with the number systems, but we, you know, here's an example of a problem you might see on a homework. You might say, categorize the following numbers. Uh, three, all right, well, three is a natural number. Natural numbers are also whole numbers. They're also integers because the integers are positive and negative whole numbers, and three is definitely a positive whole number. It's also a rational because it's written as three over one, and it's also a real because everything we talk about is a real number. So three is an example of a natural, whole, integer, rational, and real number all together. And if you're writing this out, you could use all these. You could also write, you know, use the symbols. This is why we have the symbols, double script N, double script W, double script Z, double script Q, don't be fooled, and double script R, if you wanted to. All right, uh, what about six, six halves? Now, you might look at this and say, aha, that is clearly a rational number because it's six over two. You might be right. Uh, it is a rational number, but it is also A natural, whole, rational, and real number. Why? Well, you can probably tell why. Because 6 over 2 is equal to 3. Uh, so if a number is reducing uh, down to something simpler, you, you should reduce it first and then categorize it. The number sets are not about uh, how it is written. They're about what it represents in lowest terms. The number 7 halves. Uh, is written as a fraction. You could also, of course, have seven halves. Think about it as 3.5, the decimal. Um, now, 3.5 is not a whole number. It's not an integer because it's not a whole number. So the set that this starts with is going to be rational. And all numbers are real numbers so far. So uh, seven halves is a rational number and a real number, but that's it. Negative 81. You can see you can see where we're going here. Negative 81 uh, is a integer, right? 81, but it is negative. 
So it's not a natural number. It's not a whole number. It is an integer. It is a rational number because it's like 81 over 1, and it is a real number. All right, let's keep going. Uh, now we get to the fun stuff. Here, I'm just going to put these all on one page. Uh, 6 plus pi, that is an irrational number. Pi is irrational, right? It's 3.14, never repeating. So 6 plus pi, I guess, would be something like 9.14159265 dot dot dot. And it never repeats and it never terminates. So that means that this is irrational. And it must still be a real number because uh, all numbers so far are real numbers. Square root of 22 is a square root that is not a square root of a perfect square. So this is also an irrational and a real number. Now, don't get tricky here. You might say, oh, square root of 81, same deal. But wait, square root of 81 reduces to 9. Is that true? Yes. Square root of 81 reduces to 9. 9 is a natural number. It's a whole number. It's a integer. It's a rational. And it's a real number but it is not an irrational number. So when you have a square root, reduce it just like you would reduce a fraction. And last one, square root of negative 81. Uh -huh. Now that's something a little bit different. That, uh, you might say now, uh, does not exist. So that might be a number that cannot be fit into any number systems. Now, if you've seen complex numbers before, maybe, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, uh, the, what you will this year, what happens with square root of negative 81 is we start to write that as 9i. Uh, and that actually means that this is a number, it just happens to be a complex number. So instead of writing does not exist, uh, or writing 9i at this point, I would say uh, not a real number. I think that's better than writing does not exist. And that actually brings me to the end of the video with uh, a, a little complication, which is that I've been lying to you all along. I've been telling you that real numbers are it, uh, but I just at the end proved to you or showed you a demonstration of a number that's not a real number. So it, it actually is a little more complicated. Um, when we get to chapter two, we'll talk about this again. We'll probably build this diagram again. Um, but it turns out that that entire map of real numbers is just a subset of the complex numbers which have fancy C as their logo, and they're all numbers of the form A plus BI, where A is the real part and BI is the imaginary part. So uh, really all numbers are complex numbers. Don't worry about that for now. You won't run into that. Um, but just, you know, something to think about is that uh, there are more numbers than you know and you can think about. All right. I hope this has been educational. Uh, thank you for watching this video. We'll leave that chart up here uh, if you were trying to write anything down. I know that there's a nice version of this chart in your book and a couple more examples as well. Uh, it's on page 7 of section P.1 if you need it at all. Um, so again, you've been watching ECMATH. Uh, if I've made any mistakes, please leave them in the comments. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me or ask your math teacher. We're happy to help. Uh, stay tuned for the next set of videos. We'll finish out section P.1. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you all next time.